question bismillahirrahman rahim we start another uh, paper paper 1 1 the same video which we're doing so it's the second video we'll do question number 23 and question number 40 or oh, our lord give us good in this world and good in the hereafter and defend us from the torment of the fire question number 23 bacteria were grown in a medium containing n15 after several generations all of the bacterial dna contained n15 Some of these bacteria were transferred to a medium containing a common isotope of nitrogen and 14 the bacteria were allowed to divide once the dna of some of these bacteria were extracted and analyzed this dna was all hybrid dna containing evil amounts of n15 and n14 the remaining bacteria were left in n14 and allowed to divide one more time now it said the remaining bacteria were left and allowed to divide one more time the dna was extracted analyzed what is the percentage of hybrid dna so we have four dna 1 2 3 4 out of these two are hybrid so two out of four means 15% 50% two out of four two out of four means one over two means 50% was hybrid dna Question twenty four. Which statement correctly describes the process of transcription? Transcription, please remember, is only DNA to mRNA. Translation is mRNA to protein. So mRNA is decoded by a ribosome. No. A section of DNA is converted to RNA by RNA polymerase. Yes, that's correct. tRNA transport. That's translation. So the answer is D. It was two only. tRNA transfers amino acids to the ribosome is in translation. It's not in transcription. It didn't say protein synthesis. It says transcription only. Now coming to question number twenty-five. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation in allele of the gene that codes for the beta globin polypeptide of hemoglobin. The diagram shows the sequence of bases and a small section of the template strand of DNA for both the HBA, which was normal, and the HBS. So this is HBA and HBS. Now you can see the only difference is here: GA, G, and GTG. The rest is all the same. So the sickle cell anemia is because of the GTG. If that is, this is the DNA. It says in the question, this is the DNA. So if the DNA is GTG, mRNA will be CAC and tRNA will be GUG. So A is correct. A tRNA molecule with the anti-codon GUG will form hydrogen bonds with the altered codon of the mRNA. Then it says all the amino acids coded after the mutation will differ. No, that's wrong. It's only this one will be wrong. mRNA derived from the will contain the codon CAC instead of the codon CTC mRNA cannot have T this is wrong mRNA cannot have RNA always has U doesn't have T in it the ribosome will be unable to continue transcription now why it will, it will continue transcription why will it stop transcription that's why people have sickle cell anemia it will not stop the translation the translation will take place that is why sickle cell anemia people are there in this world and they suffer question number 26 the plan drawing of a transfer section through a die cut plant stem was drawn by a student they had stained the section with a chemical that stains lignin which row is correct for the tissues w and z which w is what w is the phloem z is the xylem and what will be the stained tissue because it stains what stains lignin so the xylem will be stained so z will be stained so that is why what you have to understand is that the answer was b w was the phloem z was the xylem and z was the one that was stained i think a very easy question This question, there was a wrong. This question was wrong. That was it was discounted, so it was not considered. You would just get a one mark. Everybody would get one mark if you were taking this variant. Twenty-eight. A plant leaf seen in transfer section with a microscope shows the features listed. A thick waxy cuticle on the upper surface, sunken stomata on the lower surface, rolled leaf so the edges curl. What is this leaf adapted for? This is zero fight. It is adopt adapted to decrease water loss by transpiration. Question number twenty-nine. What occurs as carbohydrate is taken out of a sink and into a phloem sieve tube element? So the answer is D. Why? Because as the sucrose will enter the phloem, so the water potential in the phloem will become lower. 
and as water will follow so the volume will increase volume of liquid in the flowing tube will increase because out of the sink we're taking out a carbohydrate a sink so it has to be a, some sort of a molecule like sucrose can't be starch starch is never in the flowing so when the sucrose moves in water potential decreases water follows volume of the liquid will increase so the answer is d now coming to question number 30 which factors affect blood pressure the diameter of the blood vessels yes the systolic pressure of the heart ventricle means when the ventricles contract how much pressure is being exerted on the blood and how much is the pressure in the aorta and all arteries arise from the aorta basically the systolic pressure is that of the <clears throat> arterial blood the volume of blood returning to the heart in each cardiac cycle yes the more the volume returning more the blood in the blood vessels so the answer is a one two and three question number 31 Sulthiam is a molecule that inhibits carbonic anhydrase. Can a carbonic anhydrase does what? Combines CO2 plus H2O and gives you carbonic acid. So which effect would sulthiam have inside a red blood cell in muscle tissue that is respiring at a high rate? In the respiring tissues, what is going to happen? Carbon dioxide is going to be produced. It's going to be enter the red blood cell. And that is going to form carbonic acid. Now, what are the options available to us? A decrease in the rate of formation of hemoglobinic acid, a decrease in pH, an increase in the rate of the chloride shift, an increase in the dissociation of oxyhemoglobin. But it said carbonic hydrides is inhibited. So, a decrease in the rate of formation of hemoglobinic acid. Why? Because H2CO3 dissociates into H ions and HCO3 negative ions and the H ions combines with hemoglobin to form hemoglobinic acid and that's when it gives up its oxygen because in the muscle tissue it has to give up its oxygen and it combines with gives up its oxygen and then again uh, forms hemoglobinic acid HHB hemoglobinic acid so less of the hemoglobinic acid will be formed because there's less of the carbonic anhydrase which catalyzes this reaction. So a decrease in the rate of formation of hemoglobinic acid. Now question number 32, the partial pressure of oxygen in blood vessels in different parts of the body affects the percentage saturation of each hemoglobin molecule with oxygen. Now they've given you blood vessels, vein in an active muscle is 4 kPa and vein in a resting muscle is 7 kPa. So the partial pressure of oxygen in a resting muscle is 7 kPa and in the active muscle is 4. Arteriole in the lungs is 12. Saturation of each hemoglobin molecule at 4 kPa was 25% and at 7 kPa it is 75%. So look at this table very carefully and then read the possible answers. Which statement explains the difference in saturation between a resting and an active muscle? So it's something about these things only we're going to talk about. So you can see it's all this 4 kPa, 7 kPa, 4 kPa, 7 kPa, 4 kPa, 7 kPa. Now which one is correct? A small decrease in partial pressure between 4 and 7 causes two molecules of Oxygen to leave each hemoglobin molecule because the oxygen dissociation curve is steep. So you have to understand the oxygen dissociation curve and that only can tell you how, what the answer is. So the answer is B. Question number 33, which statement about the Bohr shift are correct? The Bohr shift is what? When there's more CO2, then it shifts to the right. So which is correct? The shift is accelerated by the action of carbonic anhydrase a decrease in blood pH will cause oxyhemoglobin to dissociate. A decrease in carbon dioxide concentration will cause more oxygen to bind to hemoglobin. Yes, the answer is A. All three are correct. One, two, and three are correct. Please go and revise the Bohr shift to know that why this is correct. Now, question number 34. Some of the events during a cardiac cycle are listed. Left and right atria contract, left and right ventricle contract, a wave of electric activity is conducted by the perkine tissue, a wave of electrical activity passes through the AV node. Now this diagram wasn't there, 
but I have placed it and I want you to look at it and very carefully see it. Now you can see here what is going to happen. You see after the SA node it goes to the after the SA node what is the correct sequence it says. So, so after the SA node it goes to the a wave of electrical activity. Let me just bring this down. One left and right atria contract. So left and right atria contract. So this is the left atria and this is the right atria. They contract. Then a wave of electrical activity passes to the AV node. This is the AV node. It passes through the AV node. And then if electrical activity goes to the perkine tissue, because that is how it's going to go here and here and here and here. And then left and right ventricle will contract. So the answer is B. Please remember this diagram was not given in the question. It's just I'm explaining this to you, so I place this diagram here. This diagram was not in the question paper. Of course, you won't have it. It's all labeled. Question number 35. Question number 35 is question is discounted. This was the wrong question. Question number 36, which statement is correct? Now, why are they wrong? Cholera is caused by the virus. No, cholera is caused by bacteria, Vibrio cholera. Mosquitoes are pathogens. No, mosquitoes are vectors. Plasmodium is the pathogen. Mycobacterium bovis only causes TB in cattle, not in humans. So the only answer correct is D. Plasmodium vivax is an example of a protoctist. It's not a bacteria, it's not a virus, it is a protoctist. You study this in A2 in great detail. Question number 37. The graph shows changes in the antibiotic resistance of a species of bacterium between 2000 and 2016 in one country. Samples of bacteria were collected every year from 48 hospitals. The bacteria were tested to see if they showed resistance to five different antibiotics. Now they're given you a key. The antibiotics are tetracycline, ciprofloxacin, penicillin, azithromycin, and cifixine. What can be concluded from the data? Now, this is important that you always do this question with a lot of care and thought. Does the data tell me this? Does the data tell me this? Read this, read every answer and say, does the data tell you this overuse of ciprofloxacin? No, there is no overuse. We don't even know about the use of it. So then we come to the B part. Percentage resistant to three of the antibiotics was at a peak. Let's see, is there a peak? Yeah, well, this one peaks here in 2015, this one peaks here, and this one peaks here in 2015. So then B is correct. So we understand that B is correct. See, this is of course what we had, uh, I've given you the answer, but why was this C wrong? Changes in treatment guidelines have caused resistance to some, no, but we haven't got this from the data. We did not conclude this from the data that there has been change in the treatment guidelines. The percentage of resistant bacteria is higher in 2016 and 2000. No, it doesn't show you that. The percentage is higher in 2016 than 2000. Oh, in 2016, the greatly decreased. It was the highest at this some point here. So this question you'll have to do is which one the data is not telling you that information. If the information is not coming from the data, then that answer is wrong. Then coming to question number 20, 38, some responses made by cells of the immune system to a pathogen are listed. Which responses are correct for B lymphocytes? Mitosis, bind to specific antigens, produce memory cells, secrete antibodies. All are correct, one, two, three, and four. And because B lymphocytes, number one, bind to antigen, then uh, they divide by mitosis, produce memory cells, and the memory cells uh, produce antibodies, and the memory Sorry, the memory cells uh, remain in the system. The plasma cells produce antibodies. Question number 39, which statements about the use of monoclonal antibodies are correct? Monoclonal antibodies can be injected into patients to give active immunity. Active immunity is when your own lymphocytes work. Natural active immunity. 
how would it give you immunity because you develop memory cells when vaccination uh, when you given mono monoclonal antibodies cannot result in active immunity is when the antigen and then it causes natural active immunity your own lymphocytes monoclonal antibodies can be injected into patients to treat viral infections yes that could be correct they can be used as diagnostic for specific pathogens yes so that is why the answer is c 2 and 3 only last question which statement explains how a vaccination program can control the spread of an infectious disease in a population so there is already an infectious disease in a population if we vaccinate people then say out of 100 people we have only vaccinated 20 how is this going to spread how is it going to control the spread it says control the spread so if we out of 100 people 20 are vaccinated that means the 80 are unvaccinated so if they come they un they are they are less likely to meet an infected individual but if we increase from 100 and we vaccinate 80 then unvaccinated only 20 are left now if the 20 are left then the 20 will not meet any infected individual so that is why the answer is b unvaccinated individuals are less likely to meet an infected individual because out of 100 we have vaccinated 80 so only 20 are not vaccinated now they are less likely to meet those 80 who have been vaccinated so are less likely to, because these 80 are protected only these 20 are left which are unvaccinated they can only meet each other and cause an infection so unvaccinated individuals are less likely to meet an infected a little bit of a useless question as far as i am concerned okay but we can't go into arguments with cambridge so all the best and thank you very much